Now, though, Use Joe Goldberg has become one of Netflix's most prolific and weirdly loved serial killers. This week, star of the show, uh, Pen Badgley, drop by for a chat. But first, let's take a look at uh, what Joe's been up to in season four. Beautifully done, beautifully mm. made. Pen Badgley is joining us now. Absolutely love it, but you do wonder, you look back at season one and there's this guy in a bookshop. What the hell happened to him? Um, he knew he had to keep the show going is what he is. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the reality of a serial killer versus our show, they're, they're, they're quite different, you know what I mean? Like, this is never meant to have been a clinical portrait. It's, it's a show that's about love, actually. Mm -hmm. he's, he's, like a, he's like an allegory to me. He's a metaphor. He's, he's not just a serial killer. He's a good man. No, I'm, is I'm, he? I'm never, <laughs> but the show really is about love to me. It's like what we think about love that is not love. Like actually, it's possession and manipulation and jealousy and power dynamics and all that stuff. So mm -hmm. he's just the embodiment of that. And in order to serve all that, you know, for the story, it just makes a lot of sense that he's very, very, very charming. Well, worryingly for us, he's bringing all of these character traits to London this yes. time. Yes, yes, um, yes. And so series four, it's been quite clever because they've split the release into two parts. You've had part one that's already been out there. Yeah. You've sort of teased and kept us waiting to this for final a for a month, yeah. and it's felt like a very long month, especially because the way it's been set up is a kind of who done it, if you like. Yeah, well, the first part is very much a who done it. Part two is, is, is a dramatic return to what we do best with this show, which is, look, I mean, I love the whodunit vibe and the writers did a phenomenal job, but it's not what we do. Mm -hmm. and, and it was like a necessary detour to stretch the limits and get a lot of change. Because okay. certainly, I mean, it does feel <clears throat> at the end of uh, the first five episodes of yeah. part one, OK, I sort of know, I, I begin sure. to get my own... Yeah, you're like, OK, so he's, so he's found out who the killer is yeah. and now he's going to go get them. Yeah, or and so but what I also love is the fact we've got five more episodes now where you are, you are going to turn it on its head. Yeah, and actually, so I don't know if this... This isn't a spoiler, but, like, the, spoiler, the, the twist you think you're waiting for mm. in part two, it happens, like, almost right away. It happens all my, I mean, it happens so soon. Um, sooner than you'd think. Right. And then there's like another twist. And then there's another twist. And by episodes nine and 10, you're like, what, what is happening? What is happening? Yeah. Because so. you, you sort of get the feeling that he's in trouble, which is really weird because normally he's the one causing the trouble. And yeah. of course that can't, this is not going to go that way. He can't be the one that's out of control and in trouble here, surely. Well, I don't know. I can't tell you that. No, I, I know. know. <laughs> and I probably wouldn't want you to tell me. You had your own reservations when you saw it at first, yeah. that you <clears throat> perhaps didn't want to play this guy. Yes, I mean, for, for in, in some ways, for obvious reasons, because, um, I mean, as an actor, you can kind of take anything on for a limited amount of time, but then with the show, you, you don't know how long it's gonna be. Mm. It wasn't just that I was like, oh, I don't want to play a serial killer. It actually wasn't that. I, I, I thought that could be interesting for a time. But then if I'm the only person who really has to embody this and give expression to all of his rage, it's not even the, um, it's not the, it, like you would think like the whole the killing scenes, there aren't even that many killing scenes. It's, mm. it's constantly embodying suspicion mm. and like judgment and cynicism, you know? Um, alarmingly, when you look online, some of the reaction to him and his character, you know, people will say things like, oh God, I, I, you know, if." I'd love him to stalk me or I'd love him to mm. kidnap me. It has come under criticism sometimes for sort of glamorizing of course, these things. Of course, yeah. And look, we take the criticism, I'll take the criticism. I think to me it's an interesting conversation because we're, we're, a, we're, a, we're, a, we're a show that's exploring, on one hand, why we are so drawn to power as like an abuse in mm. a way, you know? Mm. And I don't just mean physical, I mean like just the abuse of power, like that's a, that's a dynamic and that's something that we're evidently drawn to yeah. as, a, as a culture. And then again, I think like, because it's not meant to be that clinical portrait of a serial killer, it's, to me, it's more of an allegory. It's, mm. it's, it is this question about love. So we've made him charming for a reason. He's, we're, we're not, I don't feel personally that we're like glamorizing actual serial killers, but we're doing it in a climate of that. <laughs> well, the thing yeah. is, so but, it's I suppose what, what it is, is that there is, there is uh, no question that you watch uh, many of the streaming platforms, ne Netflix probably in particular, yeah. um, and, and there is an obsession yeah, with true crime. Completely. Uh, there is that danger that you see something as a, as a true crime documentary and then see something like you're doing, and as you say, this is not what they're like. 
Yeah, I mean, to me, we're not we're not even in the realm. We're in a climate of that, but we're we're really a show that's exploring the sort of love that we've seen depicted in other shows that I've been in and other shows we watch. You know, mm -hmm. it's it's in that wheelhouse much more than true crime to me. But it's using the palette of true crime because that's actually what people love to watch. Yeah. yeah. So it's so in that way, I hope it's a worthwhile exercise in a way. And it's, listen, it's good to open up the conversation. Yeah. Uh, that's something we're having now. Um, how does it feel um, to kind of get him out of your head? You just described it as like living inside a troll's head for all that time. <laughs> yeah, right. How do you get out of that? How do you get home and have... I, you know, it's not, it's, not a, it's not a popular answer these days, I don't think, but um, primarily it's like prayer and meditation. On, right. I mean, of course, having family is like enormous. That's a, that's a, that's a huge part of it. Um, spirituality is what actually helps me to to leap to 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 not concern myself. Or yeah. or just maybe posting a video or two on TikTok. Yeah, that too. Yeah. That helps. Yeah. Does that yeah. help? Dancing. Yeah. Singing and dancing. The king the king of TikTok. <laughs> this is what I've been called and it is a moniker I'm willing to uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. To well uh, if you if you weren't aware, um, this is why. Very, very good at that. I mean, it's, you know, it's fun. <laughs> it's fun. That last one was my friend Chris Yu, who, who that, that's his song. And so uh, the first time I was ever on TikTok was before I had a TikTok. It was, uh, we were, we were just, because we're friends, we just were promoting one of his songs with a dance. It's called I Did It. And that blew up. And so years ago, I was like, all right, so this is a thing. I'll, I'll get on Twitter when the moment is right. And so when the Taylor Swift song came out. Yeah. That was... Uh, she replied to that, didn't she? She did, yeah. yeah. Yeah, she did. What about the dancing? I mean, is this, is this part of your training? It, or no, is, so is, I've is, never... Is, I mean, I took, like, I took hip-hop classes when I was 12 and 13. I don't... Well, you're um, very bendy. Should have taken a hip-hop <laughs> class. That's what we should have done. That's why. I, Damn it, maybe I, we, we went wrong. I've yeah, like right. a real disadvantage on TikTok because I can't dance. That is basically all it's good yeah. for. Or that, yeah. that's, that's, that's the content people want on there. That's yeah. It. That's what they want. Well, well, Give them what they want. Your Majesty, yeah. the king of uh, TikTok, it's lovely to have you here. Part two of season four. So the, you've had the, the if, you've been, if you've been watching and you've been waiting, you've had the first five. Now part two is the, is the second five, which are, are going to twist us in all sorts of different ways. Uh, and it's out now on Netflix. Thank um, you. It's lovely to see you. Thank you very yeah, much. Thanks for having me. Thank you.